those things. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Um, so a little bit about me. You might have seen me downstairs at the Gray Log booth. My name is Taylor Rhodes, Senior Sales Director. Um, been in the STEM industry for seven and a half years on the blue team side. However, for the next 14 minutes and 36 seconds, this is going to be not work Taylor and personal Taylor. Um, so I am a self-proclaimed three-month o -sensor. I've also been in the UK for three years. I've come across, you guys might call them Watsits. I thought they were Woodsits, the best Cheeto alternative ever. Um, and I'm on the red team side. I've also learned about the British vocab, and it's not courgette. It is courgette. I was calling it cougarette in the beginning. Um, we're also doing a raffle downstairs, and it's not the Saturn V, it's the Saturn V. So if there's one thing you'll learn about me is I'm really good about mispronouncing things. Um, but for now, I'm going to stick with my, my what's-its. So what we're going to really be talking about, this started three months ago. We were at 44Con, um, and we were next to the Trace Labs booth. We were running a CTF. They were doing a CTF. Um, if anyone's not familiar, familiar with Trace Labs, they're using OSINT technology to find missing people. And so in my world, I was kind of thinking just all the data that's out there. What, what I'm kind of used to is the bumble and the hinges. What we put on there about our profile and how that kind of max, like blends in with our professional life. And so what I did was I created a Bumble and a Hinge profile. And this isn't catfishing. This isn't social engineering. No Olivia Rodrigo going on. All I wanted to do was see what are people putting out there about themselves. So I kind of went in with an open mind, wanted to see were there bots that I would come across. And I ran this exercise for about three months. Um, also wanted to see, could I find what companies they worked at if they didn't list it on there directly? And so from this, um, started with the OSINT frameworks, really great website. There's really many directions you can go with it. And OSINT is just using open source data that's already out there to kind of answer a specific question. And for me, a question was, can I tie someone's personal life with their professional life? And so the one that I use is called PIM Eyes. And if anyone hasn't come across it, it's cool, but also creepy at the same time. Basically, you just upload a picture of yourself and it will scrape the internet using the facial recognition and find wherever you're at. So I use this on myself as a test subject and it came across these photos. Now, the one in the top corner I was surprised by because that photo, I was in Galway last year, and so we know I love what's it. I am good at mispronouncing words, and if there is a scooter in the city, I'm taking it. And so Galway was launching this scooter ride. I signed up for it. They took my picture, and apparently it's on the internet somewhere, which I never knew about. So like, that's kind of crazy. Um, and then this very unattractive photo of me was also on there. And so when I clicked on it, this was a news article. If you guys remember about a year and a half ago, London had a big flood and apparently the Metro newspaper did us outside the office and that's me eating a bagel. So again, not the most flattering photo, but very fitting of me. Um, and so PIM Eyes was one of the main resources that I used in this investigation, if you will. And so when I had Bumble and Hinge, I looked at over 500 profiles and from that probably chose around 50 of the pictures to kind of analyze. Um, and so I'm not going to put anyone's photo up here that I came across, more just of the facts. And so really when I uploaded the photos, there was kind of four key areas of what PIM eyes matched people with. And the first one was through wedding sites. And so a lot of like amateur photographers or someone that has a photography business, they always put up photos. And so there was one instance where I had someone's Bumble profile, put it in PIM eyes, and then there was probably 50 people in the wedding party and it found their face in the back crowd. So that would be a creepy one. 
Um, the next one that I saw was corporate photos. And so if there was someone on Hinge that was in like finance or they were a doctor or they were some kind of tech entrepreneur, usually their face would be on the corporate website too. And you could match the person that way. Um, the third one, this one is the most embarrassing because any photo when you're like at the club in your 20s or like way back from 2014, a lot of those photos were found and these would be clubs that aren't even, they don't exist anymore. Like they went out of business, but your photo is still on the internet. Um, and then the last one, I didn't use Pim Eyes for that. However, it is racing results. So when I was kind of doing my um, bumble and hinges, maybe the algorithms thought I was looking for someone that was like really active because about six out of the 10 people had their race badges. And so what I did was I did it to myself because I also um, did a half marathon a few years ago. And so all you need is your bib number. And then you need to know either the city that they did their race or the name of the race. And so this was a photo that I had on mine in the past. And then I went to, there's the bib number. Um, and then I went to my chip time. Didn't even need my first name, just typed in the bib number. And it came back, first of all, I'm not a runner. Uh, you can see with my time. But second of all, it matches your first and last name. And then it shows all of your photos, which we will not be going through on this talk, because if anyone's run a half marathon, there is no attractive photo in you. I looked like death in all of them. But it just got me thinking of when you sign up for these races, you don't realize kind of just with the bib number, they can do your name, first name, last name, information is out there. And so this was kind of my thinking of professional tailor with personal tailor when we get into these blurred lines of data, which is really the overarching of it. So one, one instance, I don't know if you guys heard, um, Gary is an American. In 2020, he had an incident where he got a call from his son and said he was in an accident. And then long story short, it ended up being this whole deep fake. The son was in an accident. The lawyer called and he needed to send someone Bitcoin to help him out. What ended up being was someone had um, just gotten a voice of Gary's son, made up this whole incident. And I think it was in last month in November where Gary went to the Congress to say, hey, this is happening to me. How can we protect people? At the time, Gary went to the police that said, I'm trying to be scammed. But because Gary never gave them any money, the police couldn't do anything. So Gary went to the newspaper when the story was published about 20 or 25 others had the same thing happen to them. And so this kind of got me thinking, okay, if we're having Bumble and Hinge as another layer, we know who their friends are through wedding photos. Are we really adding more information about ourselves out there? And you don't even need to have their Facebook or Instagram, because I didn't use any of those kind of in my research. And I think similarly with the work life, if we know where they're working at at LinkedIn, one of the pictures that I found, um, he worked in finance. You could see the background of his computer monitors on his profile. So that was one that kind of stuck out. When I put him in PIM eyes, it actually came back with some clubbing photos that were adult club photos. Pictures his colleagues probably want, wouldn't want him to see uh, in compromising situations. But if someone found those pictures and wanted to blackmail them and they knew he worked at a prestigious law firm, prestigious kind of financial firm, are there ways that these worlds are kind of colliding more? Um, and then Google dorking, that's one that I kind of did to myself. Basically how I describe it is using Google, but kind of doing it in advanced search. So using queries that you might type into Excel, kind of Boolean search languages to find um, deeper information about yourself. 
And so with that being said, just wanted to kind of highlight the resources that I used with PIM Eyes, um, the OSINT framework, as well as Canva to make the slides look nice. And then if anyone is interested in kind of OSINT and going a step further, highly recommend Gary. I don't know him at all, but I just saw a lot of his YouTube videos and he kind of goes through these um, OSINT tutorials. Also on Spotify, the Breadcrumbs um, podcast is really great. OSINT Curious, I think they actually stopped new content um, this year. However, they have all of their um, previous information. And then there's, it might be Amazon or Netflix, the, the show Don't Fuck With Cats. If no one has seen that, it's a really great example of how the community comes together using OSINT tools to try to um, track down a, a killer. And so with that being said, just want to give a shout out to my mentor, Robert, from the Trace Labs team, as well as the B-Side London team, and then people of Hinge and Bumble. You don't know who you are, but I appreciate you allowing me to use this. So thank you, guys.